Hey guys, welcome back to another training, real estate school training. My name is David Dodge. Today we are going to talk about some of the basic principles. And these are really kind of like the basic five or six rules or lessons that I want to always, always, always convey. It, it definitely applies to real estate investing in general. Today, we are going to talk about some of the basic principles um, that I like to mention or like to teach, I should say, to newer students that join. And these are really kind of like the basic um, five or six rules or lessons that I want to always, always, always convey to new people that are getting started when it comes to real estate investing and really more specifically wholesaling, but it, it definitely applies to real estate investing in general as well here. So lesson number one, though, this is a marketing business, first and foremost, okay? If you don't have anybody to talk to about a property, then it's going to be very, very difficult to do deals in real estate and, again, specifically wholesaling. So you need to understand that this is a marketing business. If you are not getting sellers on the phone, it's going to be very difficult to do deals. So you need to understand that marketing is the most important thing. Now, when it comes to marketing, you're going to typically have two different avenues, okay? You're going to have marketing that you can do that is going to be time consuming or it's going to have to have a budget set aside of time. And there is another way, another avenue, and that is going to be a budget that you can set of money. So at the end of the day, look at it like this. Marketing is going to consist of having budgets of time or money and or money. All right. If you don't have a lot of time, well, then you can use money. And if you don't have money, then you're going to need to spend time. All right. But it's going to need to be at a minimum one of these. Ideally, you can you can use both and you have a budget of both. So why? Why do you need to have a budget of time and why do you need to have a budget of money to do marketing? Well, think about this. Marketing is just a fancy word for getting people on the phone, period. If you're not getting people on the phone, it's going to be very difficult to make friends with them, go set appointments to, to view properties, make offers to them, lock up properties with contracts. These are the basic steps that are going to be involved in the beginning to get properties under contract. So you can then wholesale them, or maybe your goals are fix and flip or rentals, and you are going to essentially need to be able to go run appointments and make friends and get properties under contract so you can buy these properties and fix them or buy these properties and keep them as rental properties. Again, maybe your exit strategy is wholesaling, but you need to be able to do these things. Marketing, once again, is a fancy word for getting people on the phone. If you aren't spending time cold calling, driving for dollars, knocking on doors, sending you know text messages or emails, whatever your method is, it's going to be very difficult to get people on the phone. Think about it, right? If you aren't spending money like, sending out direct mailers or placing bandit signs um, or building a website and driving traffic to it or running ads online, maybe through Google or Facebook. Maybe you have a, a good amount of money and you want to you know, go rent a billboard or get, get an ad on the radio, right? These are basically methods of putting your message out into the universe to where people say, hey, I see the billboard or I listened to the radio ad or I got a letter in the mail, right? We send Tons and tons of postcards that look just like this every day. We send about two to 300 of these every day. These messages will arrive in people's inboxes. And if the message resonates with them and they say, hey, I do own a property that I'd be interested in getting an offer on, they call us or they go to our website and they fill out a form. So all of these roads, all of these marketing roads, folks, are essentially going to lead to getting people on the phone. That's the ultimate goal with your marketing is to get them on the phone. Maybe you send them a letter, they call you. Maybe you call them, boom, they're on the phone. Maybe you shoot them an email or a text message and then they respond and then you set up a time to get them on the phone, all right? Maybe they hear a radio advertisement and they call a number. Maybe they see a website um, or an ad that leads them to a web form or a website on Facebook or Google. Again, all of these marketing roads are going to lead to getting people on the phone. So lesson number one, this is a marketing business. And you can market, you can actually get people on the phone, you can achieve the goal of marketing, get people on the phone. I'm going to say it again, over and over again. You can achieve that goal by either spending time doing outbound efforts, 
right? Or you can spend money to get them to call you. The outbound efforts, typically you trying to reach out to them, typically. And the money side of it, the budget of money is typically sending out messages into the universe via ads or letters or advertisements of some sort so they can see those messages and then they can call you. All right. I don't want to beat a dead horse here today, folks. Marketing is the lifeblood of our business. So lesson number one, this is a marketing business. Okay. Lesson number two, we need to buy properties at deep discounts in order to make profits in this in this business. All right. Profits aren't typically made when we sell. That's when we get paid. Okay. But the profits are actually made when we buy. So you have to understand that if you want to make a lot of money in real estate investing, you need to get really, really good at making offers on properties that are that are below their real true value. All right. If you want to be a wholesaler, you need to understand that you need to be able to get properties under contract at great prices. All right. So you can then add a little bit to that and still sell it to another investor at a good price. And you essentially make the difference. You make the spread. You buy great, you sell good. And the difference that you make is your wholesale fee. If you are wanting to fix and flip properties or buy rental properties, same thing. You got to be able to buy properties at deep discounts. You got to get great deals. All right. And the better deal you get, the bigger the spread you're essentially going to be able to make on your fix and flip, assuming you don't get crazy on your repairs. And the better deal you buy on on a property, assuming you're going to go the rental property route, the easier it's going to be to do that that deal with little to no money, assuming you're going to be using the Burr method. All right. You got to buy properties at deep discounts. All right. That's where the money is made. If you are paying retail for properties, it's going to be very, very difficult to be able to wholesale these properties, if not impossible. It's going to be very, very difficult to make really big, healthy spreads on your fix and flips. And it's going to be really, really difficult to be able to acquire rental properties with little to none of your own money, assuming you are not getting deep discounts. So do not pay retail. Learn how to make friends with sellers. Get out, run appointments if you're doing it locally. If, if you're doing it virtually, just learn how to make friends with them on the phone and, and then ultimately make offers to them that are going to be deeply discounted. Now, why would somebody want to accept a deeply discounted property? That moves us into lesson number three. Well, the reason is, is because we are going to provide convenience to them. That's the whole reason that we're able to buy properties at deep discounts is because we're offering convenience. So there's two types of motivation typically when you are dealing and talking with motivated sellers, all right? There is somebody that has a motivation um, to get the most money for the property, all right? So that motivation is they're motivated for capital, the most amount of capital. And then the other motivation is, is they're motivated for convenience. So the difference here is, is typically people that are motivated for capital, they want to sell. They don't necessarily need to sell. People that are motivated for convenience, on the other hand, typically are the ones who need to sell. That's the big difference here. So I personally don't really want to work with people that just want to sell because they're not typically motivated to sell it at a good price. They are more motivated in capital or the most amount of money that they can get for the property, all right? I'm still going to make friends with these people. I'm still going to try to set an appointment if it's not a crazy number they're asking. And I'm going to make an offer to them. But it's going to be much less likely that they're going to want to take that offer. Now, on the other hand, you have people that are going to be motivated more towards convenience. And that's really where we can shine as investors and as wholesalers and as fix and flippers, as landlords, regardless, whatever, right? As investors altogether, because we can come in and we can offer convenience to them. And whenever they need to sell a property, they're typically seeking convenience much more than they are trying to seek capital or squeezing every dollar, every nickel, every penny out of the property. All right. So definitely some things to keep in mind. What does that convenience look like? Well, guys, we're solving problems. That's lesson number four. We solve problems in this business. So in order to help solve problems for them, the problem may be something that that is involved with the house or directly correlated to the house. Maybe the house is distressed and they can't afford it anymore. They can't keep up with the repairs. Or maybe the problem is that they're dealing with something in their life that requires them to get some money or, or make some money to be able to solve some other problems. So you have distressed sellers that are distressed in their personal life you have distressed sellers that are distressed because they own a property that is distressed, okay? 
how do we solve problems for them? Well, for the most part, we do so by providing them with convenience. Lesson number three, what does the typical conveniences look like, folks? Well, number one, we're going to be cash buyers. So our offers aren't going to have a ton of contingencies that are going to be contingent upon financing. We're not going to need the bank to approve it. We're cash buyers, even if it's not our cash. All right. So number one, it's going to be a cash offer. Number two, it's going to be quick. And that's a relative term, but it's going to be quick, meaning that we're going to be able to offer to purchase the home and help solve problems for them relatively fast. Fast could be two or three weeks. That could be three or four weeks. It could even be five or six weeks in some cases, but it's going to be fast. When I buy a home, it's typically under 30 days from the time that I make the offer to the time that I close on that property. So it's relatively fast. So number one, it's cash. Number two, it's fast. Number three is, is that we're buying properties as is. We're not going to require sellers to go in and do repairs um, or paint or clean or clean out or any of these things. It's, hey, we're going to make you an offer to buy it as it sits today. If you want to take some stuff out of the home, great. We encourage that. But don't feel like you need to clean it, fix it, paint it, do anything. We're going to be buying properties as is. That's where the convenience comes in. So we are here to offer convenience to sellers that need to sell, and we're going to buy those properties at deep discounts because of the convenience. If somebody on the on you know on the motivation of hey I want to squeeze every nickel out of this property, I'm not really interested in offering them a ton of convenience. I'm not really interested in coming in and saying okay well I'm going to pay you cash and I'm going to close quick and I'm going to give you full price. That doesn't really make the most sense to me as the investor. I'll probably lose money in that case. But if I come in and I say hey I can pay you cash I can close quick. And I can even buy it as is, but because I'm giving you all this convenience, I need to get a really good deal. So just think, you know, keep up, keep that in mind. That's really what matters. You know, as investors, we make money when we buy, we get paid when we sell. That's lesson number two, discounts, okay? So let's recap. And there's a couple more that I want to touch on here, but lesson number one, guys, this is a marketing business. If you are not getting sellers on the phone, if they're not calling you or you're not calling them or you're not getting people on the phone, this business is going to be very, very difficult for you. All right. You don't buy houses from houses. You buy houses from people who own houses. So you got to get these people on the phone. I know this might seem rudimentary. It might seem simple and basic, but it is so incredibly true that we buy houses from people. So we need to be able to get them on the phone. We need to be able to make friends with them. So let's assume this is a marketing business. Lesson number two, guys, we have to buy properties at deep discounts in order to make good profits in real estate. doesn't matter what your exit strategy, wholesale, fix and flip, rental, whatever. You make your money when you buy, you get paid when you sell. So lesson number two is all about buying properties at deep discounts. Lesson number three, we provide convenience over capital. If somebody's trying to maximize the amount of, 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 of value that they're going to get out of that property, it doesn't really make sense for us to buy it as investors because we're trying to get really good deals. And if we're paying retail for properties, it's going to be difficult for us to turn around and make a profit as a wholesaler, a fix and flipper, or a little to no money rental if we're paying retail. So we got to get those properties at deep discounts. All right. So lesson number three is, is that we provide convenience. Lesson number four is that we solve problems. At the end of the day, that's how people essentially are going to want to work with us and want to take the convenience that we're offering versus go hire an agent or fix that property up or wait to get a higher offer. We're going to be able to come in and we're going to solve problems for them most of the time by providing them with convenience, but not all the time. So that way we can help them get a good deal and they can sell the property for cash as is quickly and not to make any repairs or do any cleaning. All right, so that's basically the first four things. Marketing, discounts, convenience, and problem solving. There's two or three more lessons that I want to talk to you all about today. Um, lesson number five, keep the best and wholesale the rest. Now, as you get more comfortable doing deals and you get more comfortable talking to sellers and making offers to people, you need to understand that this business is all about making money. And typically speaking, you can make a good amount of money wholesaling a property. But at the end of the day, you can typically make more money fixing and flipping that property. And if you come across a really, really good deal, you may want to consider actually being the rehabber and actually fixing and flipping the property because you can sometimes triple or even quadruple the amount, sometimes even five or six, actually, think about it, the amount of money that you can make 
in the event that you're the actual fix and flipper. When you wholesale a property to somebody and they're a fix and flipper, you know, you're going to get paid an assignment fee, but they wouldn't buy that from you if there wasn't meat on the bone still. So you can essentially save yourself that, you know, that excess value and you can take all of it. All right. Additionally speaking, let's say you want to be a landlord, which is my passion. I love being a landlord, right? The better deal that I can get on a property, the easier it's going to be for me to acquire that property and add it to my portfolio of rentals without using any of my own money. We're going to borrow private or hard money to be able to buy the property and fix it up. But the better deal I can get on it, the uh, easier it's going to be for me as the landlord. So lesson number five is keep the best and wholesale the rest. Now, this is a little bit more advanced and maybe this isn't something that somebody that's brand new is going to want to dive into. But again, as you get more experienced and as you do more deals, you should consider the, the exit strategies of fix and flip or rentals. Rentals are going to help you create long-term wealth and passive income versus just be a wholesaler. Now, nothing wrong with just being a wholesaler. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but wholesaling is a job. And if you want to use real estate to create freedom, fix and flipping and, and uh, landlording are definitely going to be better approaches, typically speaking, than just being a wholesaler. All right. Love that. So lesson number five, keep the best, wholesale the rest. Uh, moving on, lesson number six is have a buy box. And what I mean by having a buy box is, is simple. Don't just go try to make offers or do marketing, I should say. That's a better way to approach this. Don't just go out and just do marketing all over the place randomly unless you're just going to be a wholesaler. If you are actually going to pivot into being a fix and flipper and being a landlord, which is what I encourage everybody to do, there's more money and more freedom in that than just being a wholesaler. Being a wholesaler is great, but it's a job. And it's not necessarily a job that you know is going to get you a ton of freedom. It can, but it's a lot of work, all right? Uh, but you want to have a buy box. So what I mean by that is, is know in advance what kind of properties you're looking to fix and flip and, and or add to your rental portfolio, all right? Be predefine them and be specific. The reason is when it comes to doing your marketing, you don't want to just be, you know, spraying out marketing all over the place. If you know that you're looking for three bedroom, two bath houses to fix and flip or, you know, three bedroom, two bath houses to add to your rentals. When it comes to your marketing efforts, you should target those three bed, two bath homes. So therefore, you're not just wasting a bunch of time on marketing, getting a bunch of houses that suck, right? So definitely keep that in mind. I always put together a buy box before I do any sort of marketing at scale. You know, most of the time I'm sending out direct mail, you know, or doing something along those lines. I'm not going to send direct mail out to one bedroom houses because I don't want to fix and flip them and I don't want to buy them as rentals. So I'm going to target my list to houses that have a thousand square feet or more, typically two to three bedrooms or more, you know, at least one bathroom minimum, you got to have a bathroom, but ideally two or even three bathrooms in the home, it's going to make for better deals. So predefine your buy box in advance and know that those are going to be the type of properties that you're going to want to market to. All right. Lesson number seven, and then we're going to wrap this video up. This will be seven lessons for all new real estate investors. Use a CRM. All right. The reason is, is once you start doing marketing, aka getting people on the phone, you are going to get overwhelmed with the amount of information that you're going to need to remember, even if it's only six or eight leads, right? When you're talking to these people and they're telling you things and you're making offers, you know, it's going to be hard to remember when, when, when the last time you spoke, what offer you made, what their asking price is. You need a place to keep all your notes together. You need a place to organize all the photos and any offers that you made. And ideally, a place to create a task to do something at a later time. And that's why I always recommend using CRMs. My favorite CRM is ReSimply. You all can go out and get a free trial to that. Go to ReSimply, that's R-E-S-I-M-P-L-I.com forward slash Dave. I believe you get 50% uh, off your first month with that link. I'll share that link in the call notes here. Uh, but that's the CRM I, I use and I love. It's easy. But it allows us to do a couple things. Number one, we can build a team and we can we can manage leads together and collaborate in the system as a team. Number two, we can create notes 
what do we talk to the seller about? It even records phone calls, lets us send text messages, receive text messages, and email out of the platform. Most CRMs will do this. We simply got it down. Um, so again, it'll allow us to keep track of what's going on. It'll allow us to um, communicate with sellers. Um, it'll also allow us to you know, look at the property on Google Street View. We can pull it up in Zillow with just a couple clicks. Uh, we can get estimated values, and we can basically just take very detailed notes about what's going on. It even has a calculator built in to help us determine what a good offer would be, okay? Um, but additionally, like I said earlier, it's going to be a way to stay organized. And then one of the you know most important parts outside of taking good notes in a CRM is to create a task, like I mentioned earlier, to be able to do something at a later time, all right? If we are just making a call to a seller and they basically say, yeah, I'm not interested in selling today, but maybe in a month or two, and we make a note, but then we never call them back in a month or two. That's a waste of time and money in marketing to have gotten them on the phone originally. So literally one of the most important features within a CRM is the ability to create a task that says, Dave, call this person back in four or five weeks. And, you know, and then what I'll do is that task will come up and I'll see that task. It'll remind me. It'll send me an email, maybe even a text message to remind me of the task. Then I can go in and I can look at all the notes on what we talked about, maybe even listen to some of the call recordings before I call them back. And then I can call them back and I can check in or follow up. And I can literally say, hey, Tom, it's Dave. You know, I talked to you a month ago about your property at the time that we spoke. And I'm just reading my notes, right? You weren't really interested in selling, but you told me that you would be in a month. I'm checking in with you, man. Do you have any interest in selling today? I'd love to come out and meet you at the property so we can see it and determine what a good offer price would be. Period. Simple. So keep in mind, using a CRM is going to be very, very helpful for so many things. Notes, tasks, collaboration with teams, the ability to have phone numbers and campaigns and tracking and KPIs. The list is literally endless. Again, ReSimply is what I use. I love that CRM. Highly recommend it. In fact, I almost wore my ReSimply hoodie this morning. It's an awesome CRM, guys. I highly recommend it. All right, that's it. We're going to keep this video short today. That is seven quick lessons for any and all new real estate investors. Marketing business, number one. You got to buy properties at discounts if you want to make money in this business. That's number two. Convenience over capital is lesson number three. We are looking for people that need to sell. They're seeking convenience. That's how we're able to get those good discounts. Number four is that we do so by solving problems. All right. Number five, keep the best, wholesale the rest. Unless you're new and you just want to be a wholesaler. But for the most part, I encourage every single person I talk to, to at a minimum, explore buying rentals so you can get passive income and you can get your time back and you can create wealth and, and get tax benefits and or fixing and flipping. You can often make three, four, five, six times more money fixing and flipping a property or even wholetailing a property than you can wholesaling a property. It requires you to take a little risk, but the benefits are going to outweigh that most of the time. Number six, create a buy box. If you are planning on doing marketing or scaling your marketing efforts, which I encourage you to do, don't just spray and pray. Have a plan. Figure out what kind of properties you're looking to buy and then try to target your marketing specifically to those properties. Lesson seven, this is the recap. Use a CRM so you can stay organized and remember what you're doing, what conversations you're having, what you're saying in those conversations, and then ultimately remind yourself to do something at a later time. Maybe that's to send a contract, and you can also do that out of the ReSimply CRM too. It's got all the bells and whistles and all the tools that you may need. Guys, I encourage you to also check out the Discount Property Investor Mentorship. That is where myself, my partner, Mike, will mentor you um, and teach you how to get started investing in real estate. We can hold your hand and walk you through all of these simple steps. We can teach you how to talk to sellers and how to make friends and how to make offers. Um, all of these things can be found um, in our mentorship group. You also have a community there where you can network and meet other investors that are just starting out as well as other investors that are experienced doing lots of deals. Um, and last but not least, we offer three weekly coaching calls, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to really help you implement all these things that you're learning so you can start investing in real estate and hit the ground running. 
below this video, not only will I share a link to ReSimply, but I'll also share a link to a short training that you can watch that is going to show you how awesome the Real Estate Mentorship Group is. And it'll also give you a place where you can go and you can apply to work with me and join the group and the community and get started, hit the ground running and start doing deals. Start making money, become a flipper, wholesaler, landlord, whatever you, whatever you want. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Check out the links below it. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.